For centuries, the ancient world has told us a familiar story. Greeks and Macedonians fought side by side, spoke similar languages, trained in overlapping military traditions, and reshaped history together. Yet beneath the armor, banners, and battle formations, one question has never truly been settled. Were these warriors connected by blood or only by circumstance? Did shared tactics and culture emerge from a common biological heritage, or were they adopted across political boundaries that masked deeper differences? Today, a new kind of evidence is entering the debate, ancient DNA, forcing historians and scientists to look beyond texts and legends and into the genetic code of the past. The intrigue begins with how closely intertwined these societies appear in historical records. Macedon rose from the northern fringes of the Greek world, eventually producing one of history's most formidable military machines. Yet ancient writers disagreed even then. Some described Macedonians as Greeks who lived beyond the cultural core. Others portrayed them as outsiders who adopted Greek customs for power and prestige. For generations, this argument remained trapped in interpretation. Now, genetics offers something different, measurable biological data that does not care about politics, identity, or later storytelling. The physical setting of this investigation stretches across mainland Greece, northern regions traditionally associated with Macedon, and burial sites scattered throughout the ancient Aegean world. These landscapes vary dramatically rocky peninsulas, fertile plains, mountain passes, but they share one critical feature. Human remains preserved just well enough to carry fragments of ancient DNA. Cemeteries, warrior graves, and family burials become silent archives holding biological information that has survived millennia beneath stone and soil. Systematic excavation of these sites began long before DNA analysis was possible, Archaeologists originally focused on weapons, armor styles, burial customs, and inscriptions. Expectations were simple. Material culture would tell the story. But even early on, inconsistencies appeared. Graves attributed to Greek regions sometimes resembled Macedonian practices, and vice versa. When genetic technology matured, researchers realized these old excavations could answer new questions no one had dared to ask before. Traditional historical theory treated Greek identity as both cultural and biological, with Macedonians placed ambiguously at the edge. Some scholars argued Macedonians were a distinct population that adopted Greek language and religion over time. Others believed they were always part of the broader Greek genetic continuum. The problem was evidence. Tax reflected bias, politics, and propaganda. Archaeology showed cultural exchange, but culture does not equal ancestry. DNA, however, could reveal whether these populations shared deep roots or merely close contact. As genetic sampling expanded, early studies across the ancient Mediterranean began revealing a surprising pattern. Instead of sharp biological borders, populations often showed continuity stretching back thousands of years. Migration happened, but it rarely erased existing genetic foundations. This raised an uncomfortable possibility. The neat divisions historians relied on might never have existed at the biological level. The major breakthrough came when usable genetic material was recovered from multiple warrior-associated burial contexts dated to classical and early Hellenistic periods. These were not elite-only grades, but representative samples of broader populations. When sequenced and compared, the DNA revealed overlapping genetic profiles between individuals buried in southern Greek regions and those from areas associated with ancient Macedon. This overlap did not suggest identical populations, but it did show shared ancestry far deeper than political history alone could explain. Both groups traced significant portions of their genetic makeup to Bronze Age Aegean populations. This indicated long-term regional continuity rather than sudden population replacement. In simple terms, many Macedonian warriors were biologically closer to Southern Greeks than older theories had assumed. Understanding how scientists reached this conclusion requires looking at stratigraphy and dating. The skeletal remains came from well-documented layers, 
often sealed beneath undisturbed sediment. Carbon dating placed them firmly within known historical periods, while genetic degradation patterns matched expected ages. Results were calibrated to account for environmental variation, ensuring the dates were minimum estimates rather than exaggerated claims. The tools found alongside these remains added another layer of evidence. Weapons, spearheads, and shields were crafted from materials sourced locally, suggesting established communities rather than transient forces. Microscopic wear patterns showed repeated use, not ceremonial placement. In some cases, protein residue analysis hinted at diets consistent with long-term settlement, not temporary military encampments. Taken together, the evidence painted a picture of warriors who were not outsiders passing through, but members of stable populations deeply rooted in their regions. Their shared military culture likely grew from centuries of interaction among closely related communities rather than sudden cultural borrowing between unrelated groups. This has profound implications for how we understand ancient warfare and identity. If Greek and Macedonian warriors shared significant genetic ancestry, then the sharp distinction drawn in later political narratives may reflect rivalry more than reality. Identity in the ancient world may have been fluid, layered, and situational, less about biological difference and more about allegiance, power, and leadership. Placing this within the broader climactic and historical context strengthens the case. These populations endured similar environmental pressures, agricultural cycles, and regional conflicts over thousands of years. Genetic continuity suggests resilience rather than replacement, adaptation rather than displacement. Comparisons with well-known cultural benchmarks reinforce the impact of these findings. Just as genetic studies have reshaped understanding of ancient migrations elsewhere, the Greek Macedonian case demonstrates that cultural dominance does not always correlate with biological difference. Macedon's rise under powerful leadership did not require a new people, only new organization, ambition, and strategy. Importantly, scientists remain cautious. DNA reveals connections, not identities. Shared ancestry does not erase cultural diversity, regional variation, or political rivalry. It simply reminds us that ancient populations were often more interconnected than historical labels imply. Deeper layers at some sites may yet reveal even older shared roots, pushing the timeline further back still. In the end, the question was never just whether Greek and Macedonian warriors shared blood. It was whether history's boundaries were ever as rigid as we imagine. Ancient DNA suggests they were not. Beneath helmets and banners, these warriors carried genetic stories written long before battles were fought. Stories of shared origins, slow divergence, and enduring connection. As technology advances and more sites are studied, the genetic map of the ancient world will continue to sharpen. Each discovery reminds us that history is not fixed in stone. It lives in the soil, in the bones, and now in the code that survives long after empires fall. And somewhere beneath the earth, more answers are still waiting to be uncovered.